exhale down. Big breath. And let yourself roll down to the front. Big breath in and out. If it makes sense to sway today, if that feels good, then let yourself feel good and sway. If it feels better to stay still today, then let yourself stay still. Gather that core in. Reach the arms up by anchoring the shoulder blades back in together. And just feel that powerful diagonal reach. Radiating out through your hands. <sighs> Rooting down through your hips. And inhale brings you all the way up. Exhale over to your right. Radiate out through your hands, also down through your hip. Then exhale. Paint your palm down the back wall behind you. Inhale, curve and bring it up the top. Exhale. Really leave your shoulders where they are and send your arm back so that you get the front of the shoulder here to get a nice stretch. And come on up. Exhale over the other side. Radiate through those hands, grounding through your hips. Take your time with that circle. As you reach forward, you feel your back stretch, then your side body. As your arm rotates and slides back, you're opening up your shoulder and your chest. And all that shoulder chest opening is going to relax your neck as you stretch your neck. Let this one bring you up center. Drop those shoulders down. Open up your arms nice and wide. Little tuck of the chin as you lean the rib cage back so your heart can open forward. Notice how your hip flexors might be squeezing to hold your weight. And see if you can soften them by jiggling the leg. Instead, use your back muscles, your lower back muscles, to lift your weight upward. Swing those hands back, palms on the floor. Go ahead and walk them back first, just like a kitty cat making muffins, yeah? So this action of pushing through the hands and the fingers is also warming up your wrists and forearms. Elbows back. And before you really lean, let's bend those elbows and flap them like chicken, chicken wings, chicken wings. Squeeze them together and then press and find a big arch through your back. Shoulder blades down and together. Thinking first just about separating each of the ribs. Separating the ribs. Chin in. Option to lift the heart. Option to lift the hips. Exhale, take those hips down. Big breath in. Grab your hands, flip them, palms out. Curve your spine back as you switch your legs. Just turn on the diagonal here. So now your other leg is forward. And lean left and right. Inhale, lift it up. Find your hands behind you. Hold hands with yourself. I know it's quite hard. And lift those hands up and see if you can drop your head forward and lift the hands up higher. If all you've got is one finger, that's fine. See what you can do here. Release those hands to your hips and slide them forward. And let's stretch our wrists.
Inhale and lengthen the body, and we're gonna walk the body over your left leg. And I'm gonna reach up, trying to make the longest point from my right hand down to my right hip, which is staying grounded. And then I'm gonna exhale as I reach across this left thigh. Inhale, rise up a little bit. Exhale, get down a little bit lower. One, two more times with breath. Inhale, rise up, and exhale. And you notice that hip wants to come off the ground. Anchor it into the earth. So I'm pushing a little bit with this other hand to anchor my hip down. Because what we want here is for this back side, through your quadratus lumborum, through your waist and your back, all of that to get a big stretch. So if our hip comes up, is to get over a little bit farther, then we won't get the same stretch here in the back. Let your lower back have this. Give that lower back a gift. Every breath Inhale, I'll take it up. Is heavy Put that hand down behind that heavy you just stretch and lift the weight. The moment I wake, I'm chasing signs. Rotate towards your right leg now. So this is left arm, left leg. And we're going to do that same lean out. Exhale. Anchor that shoulder down. Inhale. Lengthen. Exhale a little lower. Inhale. Exhale. One more. And take it down. Woo! One more breath, you know. Let go of that tension. Gather in from your root. Lifting up your pelvic floor, rising up. Let that hand come down behind the hip and lift away. Big breath in, come center. Put those knees together. Squeeze them together today. Curve your lower back. Toes stay on the floor and rise down to three. Think about that belly lock, friends. Keep pulling your belly button into your spine. And your pelvic floor up towards your belly button. And stay down at the bottom. Imagine two very cute small animals of your choice. If we were in class together, I'd have you yell it out. So feel free to yell it out. Are they bunnies, hedgehogs, frogs? Whatever your favorite animal is, just imagine two of them. They're looking up at you. You're just patting them on their cute little heads. Puppies? What are they? Who pulling that belly lock in? Rise up. We're going to curl down. We're going to go to bunny number one, bunny number two, and back up. Bunny number two, bunny number one, and back up. Are you managing to keep that belly lock in? That's really challenging here, right? Because it wants to squeeze out when we get tired. All right, come back up. Bend those legs, keep the knees straight up, and lean forward for a forward fold. Three breaths. Remember, you want to feel this in the back center of your legs, not behind the knees or under the bottom. Walk those legs in place, let it be fancy. Roll yourself up and back. And walk those legs on the seat. Get your arms up, whatever feels good. Exhale, curl that belly lock in. And we're just gonna curl our tailbone off the foot. If it's one millimeter, that's fine. Resist the urge to swing your legs. It's not about swinging your legs. You're just doing a tiny curl from the bottom of your hips. Warming up that fiery core. And rock it forward. Knees out, big breath in. Forward over to your bound angle or butterfly stretch. Roll it up. And 
come into your child's pose. Flip those wrists over again. Take a few breaths here in your child's pose. on what our theme, our yoga movement theme is for this week. And this week is support. So last time we, last week we talked about radiate, this idea of attenuating the body, reaching and lengthening, and that helps with balance and energizing the body. This time we're talking about support and support in yoga. I like to think of it as like the shocks on your bike or the shocks on your car, like a spring system that as the weight of your body sinks into the earth, instead of that you're pressing down and that pressure, that force goes into the ground and rebounds to send you back up. This is different than stomping like you're trying to break the floor and just like having that energy go down and out and get lost. It's different than squeezing really tight and bracing against the floor, which is not good for balance, right? If I squeeze really tight and try and hold my spot like stubbornly, someone can just push me over. <laughs> so support is this idea that there's a give and take into the earth underneath yourself. And another way that people talk about this in yoga often is to use the word root, because you are thinking about reaching into the ground and going between yourself, and then you know, the nutrients come up out of the soil for another fun metaphor to think about. All right, so let's go ahead and bring those feet together. And we're going to, of course, lift up to our center, send our hips back, and look down and make sure those knees and toes are straight forward. We're going to be all the way together today, so I want you to squeeze it in a little bit and sink back. And as you look down, make sure that your knees are not passing your toes, right? Because we could be, instead of sitting backwards, we could also be rocking forwards. And that's not where we're going today. Today we are sitting backwards, like someone's grabbing your booty, taking it back behind you. So, as you do this, when you do this, you're going to start feeling your thighs, especially your quadriceps. Quadriceps are the four muscles on the front of your thighs, yes? They help you with knee alignment. And as you stay down here, you begin to feel muscle fatigue. Those muscles start to get tired and a little achy. That's groovy. If you sit back a little lower, you might get that feeling into your butt as well. That's good. Big breath in. Press into the floor. Exhale down. Instead of thinking about lifting up from our chest, I want you to think about coming up by pushing your full feet into the floor. Sink it back down. Notice where your weight is. It's a little more in your heels. Push the floor away and push into your balls of your feet a little bit. And settle back down. Big breath in. All right, we're going to go on into our sun salutation from here. Exhale, sink it down. Feel your weight shift into your heels. Push the floor away, big breath in. Push into the balls of your feet as you lift up your chest. Exhale, let your arms drop back. Inhale, back up. Push into the floor. Remember you want like a bouncy, springy feeling. So go ahead and jiggle it a little bit if that's fun. Find your forward fold, big breath. Exhale, soften it. Bend those knees if you need to. 
Inhale, halfway up. Exhale, soften again. Let your hands touch the floor. If you want, your left leg's going to go back to high lunge. And take your time to find your foundation. We're in high lunge. That means our hips are still square. Although, today we're going to learn about the difference between high lunge and warrior one. Exciting! So finding that foundation, can we take a moment and find a little bounce, gentle bounce, not a hardcore bounce. Let's find that little squishy bounce. Yes. All right. Knees over ankle as usual. Both are pointing straight forward. Take that bounce off. Micro bounce, a half an inch, a quarter of an inch. Big breath in with the arms. <sighs> Exhale, pull them down. Press into the earth. Inhale, draw it up. Exhale, push it down. Inhale, pull it up. Exhale, push it down. And reach your head forward. If you have bricks, you can come to your bricks here. Hands to the floor. Step back. Find your plank, stay here. Knees on the ground is absolutely acceptable and awesome. Everybody knees down, and we're gonna slowly move into the earth with our elbows back, shoulders back, elbows back. Reaching the top of your head forward. And rest your head on the floor. Now we're going to Press the hands into the floor and come up just a half inch and back down. Half inch and back down. Up, back down, and up, back down. So what I want you to do is use this tiny movement to take the time to feel whether you are starting this beginning of a press up by gathering in your root lock in your belly and squeezing those elbows in. Yeah, so we usually think about getting up and that lets us move the rest of our body. Just take this time to lift your rib cage one inch off the ground. And when you do that, where do you feel this? Hopefully you feel something in the back of your arms, in your back or your abs, but maybe you feel it in your shoulders. That would mean that you're pinching your shoulders together to try and get up. Maybe you feel it in the back of your neck to lift with your head and neck. And you want shoulders down, bellies in, press the floor away. One more time and then hover for two breaths. Breathing, hover. Lengthen through those fingers. Press the fingers out into your mat. And come all the way back up to downward dog. Take a walk with those feet. Imagine that as you push into the earth, the earth pushes back up, supporting you. Let those heels drop, soft knees. Curve the chest forward, and bring your shoulders closer to over your hands. Feel how that compresses your wrists. Exhale, bend the knees, and press all of your weight back so that your hands are pretty much free. And think about Reaching out and forward with those hands. Think about reaching out and forward with those hands. So you're not feeling the weight in the heel of the hands, but instead you feel it in the knuckles and fingertips. Keep breathing one more time. Exhale, take your chest back towards those bent knees. And bounce here. Bouncy, 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 springy, springy support. All right, gather that core together and lift your left leg up. Keep those hips square. Breathe into it. Let your chest fall towards your knees. Exhale, tuck that knee to your chest and perhaps curve forward. 
Exhale, take it back. Your weight goes back over the back leg. The leg comes back up in the air and you give a little squeeze of your gluteus maximus to get all the way back up again. Exhale, tuck the leg to your chest. Curl the body, shift forward, shift back, exhale. Leg extends on the inhale. Bring that leg through, step to it. And take some time finding your foundation now that you're in a high lunge with the left foot forward. The most important thing is self-remembering. Let that ground feel springy underneath you. Front leg is aligned. Find your breath up. Sink that support down into the earth. Even weight on your front leg and your back leg. Every moment be aware of what you're doing. the hips down into the ground. Big breath in. We're going to take our head forward and lift our hands up in the sky. Hold on tight. Hold on tight. But find soft, juicy support in your legs. Can you drop your head here? Yoga. You can be watching. Let your hands come down to your hips. Touching the floor if you like. Stepping together. You can be alone. Soften, let it go. Inhale, rise up. Exhale, let it go. Inhale, rise up. Take those arms up into your awkward chair. Isn't that an apt name for this pose? The awkward chair. <laughs> All the way together, big breath in, come on up. Here we go, right side. Always at every moment be aware of what you're doing. Inhaling upright, exhale forward, fold. Inhale, flat back. Exhale, right leg steps back to high lunge. Find your foundation. Find your square hips. You must be centered. Push evenly front and back foot. Rise up. Arms float up. And we're gonna you have to let it happen. Press down into the earth. Inhale. Take that energy back up out of the earth. Exhale. Sink down. Feel your full front foot into the mat. Become liberal. Inhale. Lift up through your legs like you're drawing water up into your tree branches. One more time. Exhale. Press into the earth. Let the earth give underneath you. Inhale. Draw up those nutrients. You can be watching. Lean it out. You can be concentrated. Come down to the earth. Stepping back you can be alone. into your plank. Press your fingertips and your knuckles in the mat. Lowering down. Inhale, come up halfway. You have to let it happen. Exhale back down. Everybody in child pose. Stretch those wrists out. And feel the weight of your hips going down towards your heels. Big deep breaths. 
come center and up to your downward dog. You have to let it happen. Drawing those cords together. Look at your you have hands. To let yourself wake up. Can't if you, most of us feel when we first start liberated. The weight being in the heel, the outside tip of each hand, most of the weight. And I want you to use those muscles we worked on last week to, remember we talked about the disappointed flamingo action. I want you to press into the mat today, thinking about your hand like a foot. You know when we walk, we put the heel down and then we roll forward through the toes and push off. That same action is gonna happen with the hand. So we're gonna engage through the forearms and find support by pressing. In fact, let's all come onto our knees here. Place your wrist down. Make sure those elbows are back to give yourself a lot of space. And press up to the spider hand pose and drop it back down. So it's like I'm doing this. Whatever. <laughs> but with your hands on the mat, yeah. So feel that feeling. And notice if your if your fingers seem to hyperextend, we don't want that. Instead, we want to engage the whole hand, just like a kitty making muffins. Yeah. All right. So with that feeling, when you come back up into your downward dog, instead of feeling like the heel of your palm is pressing into the mat, you're spreading out the weight of the body throughout the hands, knuckles, and fingertips. And it almost feels as though the heel of your hand would come up. Well, you could, but don't do that. <laughs> and then big breath in. And dive your ears between your arms so that those armpits get all the way open. If you're getting tired in this activity because we're staying up a lot, remember you can come down to your child's pose at any point. Just keep working on finding a place for your ear to be next to your arm even if your knees are on the floor. All right, friends. Whether your knees are on the floor or you're up and down downward dog, we're gonna inhale up that, left, that right leg. And if you're on the floor, it's even harder to stay square in the hips. Yeah, it's easier on the arms, but harder to stay square in the hips. <sighs> Exhale, the thigh comes in, and inhale, the knee comes forward. So this is the, the less arm work version of this activity. It's still quite challenging. In fact, I might make us all do both of them next time. Alright, for those of you who are in downward dog, the leg is coming up as you inhale. As you exhale, the thigh comes into your chest. And you inhale to shift the weight forward in the pendulum if you're doing that. Exhale, weight back. Let this next one step through. Here's your high lunge. Square those hips and squish into the mat. Find a little bounce. Micro bounce. Square hips, micro bounce. Brings you up. Most of us, uh, the next stage is that the wrists come apart, and so we want to start squeezing those palms together as a way to strengthen through those forearms in the way that we were just working on, yeah? So, <sighs> lengthen forward and back. See if you can drop your head. Step together. Forward fold. 
big rest. Inhale, halfway up. Exhale, hips back. Roll it out. Take it center. Go ahead and sink down. Feel those hips go back. Go ahead and take your hands to your knees. Squeeze your legs together. Reach your tailbone further back. Big breath in. Take your hands to your hips. And twist your chest going to be less than you expect unless your hips go with you and we don't want that for this exercise. We want to keep those knees straight together, aligned forward with the toes, buns go down. Big breath in, twist, rotate, revolve. Go ahead and put your, in fact let's do it like this, let's have your right hand on your hip, your left hand on both knees. If you twist your hips, your knees will no longer be even to the front. Yeah. Give yourself some feedback here, big breath in. Press into that right hand, right hip to revolve. And then draw your shoulders back. Draw your shoulders back to lengthen the spine. Sink on down. Knees in the front, keep them even. It's really tricky to keep them even. Big breath in, lift it up. Open your chest. Let's flow for a second, just like a wave. Big breath in. Exhale, swing it. Inhale, rise up. Circle the arms. Let it be refreshing. Flash like a wave. Inhale, find that hover, that space without breath. And then exhale. Flash. Hover. Good. Come back to your awkward chair. Check that your knees and toes are all the way together. Your right hand's going to go on your knees. Find your way lower. Left hand's going to go on your left hip. Press down as you revolve that chest. Shoulders anchor back. Find your breath. Let it be challenging. Bring it forward. Find your way down to seated for a second. Here's a little surprise. If you want to sit on a brick, that's fine. We're going to do tiny little leg lifts while we talk about your medial quadriceps. Quad means four, of course. Seps means head. I don't know why muscles have heads, but they do. There's four muscles on the top of your thighs, two in the center, one below the other lateral or side quadriceps and your medial quadriceps are in the middle here now everybody please grab your kneecaps yes and then just where my thumb ends up if i grab each kneecap there's that lump of flesh yeah so we want to find this medial quadricep because for a lot of us it tends to get it tends to be a little bit weak and it tends to be that our habit is to not trigger the use of it as often as we need to. We often rely on the outside quadricep too much and that is one of the reasons why um, knees dangle outward Yeah, when we're running or walking. We want this one to support the knee and keep that knee tracking forward. So, all I want you to do is lift your leg up, but I want your kneecaps to both be pointing straight upwards. So it's okay if your legs are bent, as long as those kneecaps are pointing straight upwards. And then I want you to just lift a leg. Actually, I think it's harder with these men. Kudos to you guys. <laughs> All right, so I want you to have knees straight up and then put your hands. This is your knee just inside, like inside and closer to you. And lift and straighten each leg one leg at a time. So you can feel this muscle contracting. I'm going to come up close so you can see a little bit better. Yeah, here's my kneecap. Just inside and above my kneecap. And then when I, when I lift this leg, I can feel this muscle go boink. 
as it contracts. Boink. Take those hips, curl them back. Let's go ahead and lay on our elbows because that's a nice break. Shoulder blades back in together, belly in, legs together. Pull your belly button down. So we're not arching out through the back here, yeah? I want you to feel like you're curved. All right, here you go. You're just gonna lift a leg and bring it back down. Just like four inches. Tiny motions. Yeah. Lift that leg. Bring it down. Lift that leg. Are your hips moving? Can you use your core strength to keep them from moving? Let's try the other side. Lift that leg. Down. Lift that leg. Down. Lift that leg. Down. How does your shoulders do? Now bend them. Now it should be even easier to curve your lower back. Oh, this feels nice to me. And I want you to slide the leg out and lift and lower and bring it in. Slide the leg out, lift, lower, bring it in. Keep on going. Slide the leg out, lift it, lower, tension. My back falls when lifting my leg. Okay, I want you to keep the back in the down position then. If your back feels like it's falling when you're lifting your leg, that means we're not starting in the position we want. So, so curve that back down and in and try and use your abs to hold that down position. Uh, tension in my neck when doing it. Are you chin poking perhaps? Can you curl your chin into your chest? Instead, that might help. Good. All right. Did you switch sides yet? Can't remember if I told you to go alternating or not. If you're alternating, good. If you did all one side, make sure you get the other side in to be nice and yourself and see what are those ankles doing what are they doing back there we would like them to be I'm gonna face this way we would like them to be quite close together if not all the way together your heels come up it's okay if they're like three or four inches apart but we want to keep them underneath your hip sockets and hip bones yeah not out here by the sides of your hips that's a whole different scenario, right? It's probably not using those inner thighs. We want to pull our inner thighs together and learn to start asking ourselves to come back to center for strength. Next week, center. All right. Taking your hands, push into the floor, and rock back. Yeah, so pushing into the floor, elbows in, shoulders back. Push away from the floor, rock back. As you do this, you're stretching your calves and ankles. Push into the floor, rock back. Squeeze those thighs together, please. Push into the floor, rock back. All right, squeeze your thighs together. If you have a chair or a couch nearby and you want a little support, you can use a prop for balance. We're gonna squeeze those legs together, keeping the knees pointed forward, no wobbly knees. You're gonna rise up. So bus stop A would be holding on to something gently but keeping your knees together as you rise up. And we rise up by supporting, by pushing down into the earth and letting that energy of pushing down send us back up. Bus stop B, no hands or partial hands. Bus stop C, D, hands in namaste. Oh, C, hands in namaste, heels down. D, heels slightly lift. 
like yourself. Everything back to that center line. This is an option. You might only go two inches down. Bus stop A. Bus stop B. C. D. Squeeze those legs together. Good. And everybody find your way back to the earth. Let's go ahead and send one leg forward. Big breath in. Exhale. Twist towards that thigh. Pull those shoulder blades down. Your right leg is forward. You're twisting towards your left leg. onto those sits bones and if that means you've got to scooch this foot out a little further to try and work your way towards an upright back I want you to scooch that leg out rather than trying to keep as close as possible let's slide it down and switch sides we'll come back to this twist if you're feeling like you're just getting into it don't worry we'll be back shoulder blades anchor down the back that action of drawing your shoulder blades down will help you to sit up taller notice what your legs are doing can you squeeze them towards that center line can you push down with your hand push down with your foot and let that help you get taller big breath in come back center and switch again all right I'm going to slightly turn towards the spent leg. I'm going to take this long leg and I'm going to lift it off the ground. Two inches is plenty. And I want you to feel that muscle we just talked about, your medial quadricep. I want you to feel your, mus your medial quadricep doing the work. Yeah, toes and knees straight up. If you are just way back here, you can still do that. Just hold your tummy in, yeah, if you're super tight. We want to work towards upright, twisted, leg lift. Come back home. Switch sides. Upright, twist into it, leg lift. And I'm supporting with my bent leg. Anchor down at shoulder blade. breath in. Exhale, be the wave. Bend legs are fine. Inhale, rise back up. Bending your left leg. Right hand is going to take bus stop A would be under the knee. B, C, D is a heel. E is your two peace sign fingers can wrap around the big toe if you're super flexy, yeah? So find your spot, find that upright chest and twist into the leg. And now we're gonna extend that leg up. Might not get all the way straight, that's fine. But notice that it probably wants to rotate out and we still want that knee and toe straight up as we see. Yeah, could look like this. There's our bust up A. You could even put this hand out. But then I want you to think about lifting that lower back. So you're activating your lower back. Lengthen your tailbone into the earth. Come forward. Switch sides. Bust up A, you can be a little bent in both legs in order to be upright. You can grab under the thigh. B, A, B's calf, C, towards the ankle, D, heel, E, foot. Twist into it. Press through that leg and it's gonna wanna turn out, so keep that knee upright. Find your position. Could be down here. If you're feeling like your pelvis is rocking back, 
Work on getting an upright pelvis. That'll help you get towards the goal. Upright pelvis. Hand on the floor is fine. Come on back then. We're gonna tuck those knees underneath ourselves to come to all fours. Roll it up. Check in with yourself. How does it feel to sit, to stand on your knees today? If it's really uncomfortable, maybe stick a towel underneath there, or you happen to have this mat with you. So if you have a really thin mat that's not giving you enough padding, you can just grab the front end, Hold it up three or four times and put your knees on that. Look, it's right there for you. Yeah, I have a pretty squishy mat, so I'm not gonna do that, but make your knees comfortable. We'll be here for a couple minutes. It's okay if you need to stay up a little bit because knees are a thing. All right, find your belly lock. Exhale, drawing in, also lifting up from your pelvic floor and curl back. Now, when I do this, I already feel some tightness. Yeah, I feel it around this edge of the knee because my external quadricep crosses the knee and attaches. Yeah, they all go across the knee. So I'm gonna hang, hang right here as though someone has pulled my belly button through the back of my spine. I'm tipping my pelvis back and that makes me start to stretch. Squeeze my legs together. Whoosh. Rise up. Good. Take your hands to your hips. Notice how everybody in the world wants to stick it out. Yes. Curl it underneath. Open up the front of your hip sockets. There I feel tightness in my quads again. I'm gonna keep tucking my butt underneath. I'm even gonna squeeze my butt a little bit today. I'm gonna squeeze it, tuck it underneath. If I were a dog and I had a floofy waggy tail, that tail, I would be trying to reach underneath mentally and grab it under, yes? Big breath in. <sighs> Pull your belly button back and see if you can sit back. You might notice when you sit back that your legs wanna sway out to the sides but I want you to keep them squozen forward. Now let's bring in this idea of support. I'm gonna pull into my center and I'm gonna let that energy, that strength, press into the ground. <sighs> Pressing down to rise up. Good. Bring those legs back together if they split apart. One more time, curve it. Curve it back. Now, gentle, listen to your body. Maybe you don't go all the way back this time. Maybe your body's like, oh, I don't know where to go. I don't know. All right, rise up. We're gonna take that front leg forward. And we're gonna work into our low lunge. Really thinking about this forward leg. The knee wants to go out. Sometimes that's part of our stretch, but I want you to pull it forward. I want you to press into that front leg as though you're going to step on it. So we're actively creating warmth and heat by thinking about pressing into the earth and trusting that that effort is going to rebound back into us to give us a springy sensation, yes? How about those hips? Can we take them from behind ourselves, tuck them underneath, bring our shoulders over our hips, and open up your right top of your thumb. All right, send it back one more time, gathering and gently forward. Press into that front leg, make tension. Imagine you could stand right up from here, but don't. But just think about that, push into the earth. Push down into the earth. Two more breaths, push down into the earth. Now that I'm taking the weight in my hands, I'm going to make an exception to our normal rule and allow this knee to travel forward just a little bit towards the toes, yeah? And then I'm gonna draw it back again. I'm gonna tuck my back toe because that's what I prefer. You can be 
tucked or pointed back here, whichever you like. I know, I know, because my knee passed my ankle that this foot can go forward a little more when I go forward next. So I'm going to let it slide. And I'm going to come forward. That's our foot. Inhale. Juicy hamstring stretch. Inhale, shift. Exhale. Now I'm going to scooch my back thigh back to get closer towards a big, wide, long slip. We've been doing some twisting today. So I want you to think about this front knee. Draw it towards your body and revolve the shoulders towards that. Thigh. I'm going to lift up a little bit because it makes me feel like I can twist a little deeper and then sink down into the earth. Take a big breath in. Shoulders back. And can we take the take our weight and think about pressing instead of just into the heel, press into the ball of the foot as well. And in the hand instead of just into the heel of the hand here on the floor, can we support pressing into the knuckles and fingers. Spread that effort out. Press like you're trying to reach roots into the soil. Big breath in. A little more yield in the hips. Good. Both hands down. Take it back. Hopefully your back thigh was getting a stretch there. And now your front underside. All right, here we go. This one is a bus stop optional. If you're happy just hanging out in the stretch, stay there. If you'd like to go on a little bit, you can choose bus stop A underneath the thigh, above the knee, or calf or ankle, or toe. We're gonna scoot your left hand out to the side a little bit, and we're going to Extend that leg. Gently take that foot back down. We'll walk yourself back forward. And we're going to slide your back leg back again and open the hips. Now I'm using a little bit of help from my arm here to keep this knee forward, which is very nice feeling. I'm going to change my back foot to pointed, so it was tucked and I'm changing it to pointed. And now I'm going to take your left arm inside of the left knee and I'm going to let the weight go from my whole foot onto the side of the foot and let the knee open. So we're really changing that front hip socket. Now my weight is in both of my hands, under my shoulders, and I'm thinking about supporting through the knuckles and fingertips. There's not as much weight on the front leg now. All right, bring your front foot back here. Take this whole apparatus back for a nice stretch again. Stretch out that front wrist. Go ahead and step forward, lifting up the back leg to high lunge, stepping back to plank, lower down to the mat, and stretch your hands behind you. If they are sweaty, wipe them off on your shirt, grab hands, roll those shoulders back, hold hands, and let the thumbs go towards your knees as you pull your legs together. Draw your belly lock in, shoulder blades down, tuck yeah, that chin so you're looking at the mat, you're not and looking you forward, and lift your shoulders so off the light, mat if you so can. Light, when heavy, Long lower back, keep lifting your abs in to support the lower back. Be ready to all fall down, all fall really? Down. On tight, Take your hands to the mat, press up, come back to sitting on your feet, child's pose, and flip your wrist Side like it's all the pleasure in the world. There's a warning coming in. Storm coming. Overhead. In your bed. There's nowhere to hide. There's lightning in the sky. Storm coming. 
those legs to your center line, core and lift it up and push the earth away. Front leg is now going to be your right leg. Let's take some time to explore. So you may find one side is very different than the other. For example, this is super tight on you today. So just this action is really intense on my hip flexor here in the front. So I'm going to take some time. I'm going to let the blood circulate in there. I'm going to tuck my hip underneath. And I'm going to slowly slide into it. Give a little release. Remember earlier we did that breathe. Extend. Same feeling applies. Big breath in, breathe. Exhale, let it go. Let it go. back if your booty seems to like stay up and open and ask it to come back to square. Inhale, shift forward. Start to send that back knee back further as you work deeper into the stretch, finding your breath. Coming past my toes, I know that it's time to scooch that lunge a little bit. Alright, so I'm going to come back towards your left leg and I'm going to grab the right leg and find a, a way to extend it with the knee up. Find your bus stop. Listen to that knee that you're on, sitting on. I like that kind of a pressured situation. So let's come back forward and spread. Feel the square hip first, then we're going to transfer the arm to the inside and let the whole thigh open out. Yeah, remember if your wrists are getting tired, you can switch to your knuckles here, or if they're tired but your arms are free, you can come down to your forearms if this is comfortable for you. And here in this stretch, since we've let this knee out, you want to feel more of a hip opener here. We're going to lift our arms, gather in our core, press down, squared hips, so I'm holding my knees to the forward, and my back hip also holding forward. And I'm going to press both legs, support into the ground. So I'm pushing down into the ground with this foot, and pushing through the whole shin 
with the back foot. All right, five breaths. Big breath in. Push into the earth. Push into the earth. Push into the earth. Push into the earth. Feel that support. Feel that strength rebounding into your body. Back to plank or modified plank. Legs together. Lower to the vert. Breath. Just put your forehead on the floor. Real break. We're going to take our wrists forward into a stretch. So my back of my wrist is passing the knuckles that are stuck to the floor. <sighs> I'm just going to let go for a moment here. Witness without judgment. <sighs> Draw your belly. Up away from the floor, lengthen your tailbone like we did curling that hip towards your heels, squeezing your legs together, find your hands if you can, and back up into your low. Taking those hands by your shoulders, go ahead and inhale and press back up. And bring yourself to downward dog, lifting up your right leg. Take your right leg through to pigeon and find your pigeon, either hips up or hips down. Go ahead and allow yourself to roll out to the side in your pigeon. So I'm all, I'm on, I've got right leg forward and my right hip is down on the floor. From here, take your hand to your left hip. And that left hip, I want you to just roll it all the way open and roll it closed. Just so that you can feel sort of where it is. And you notice that this left hip, as it closes, then eventually all the ways clear, closed and square would bring you off the ground with your other leg. So find a place where your butt is still on the ground but you're trying to be as closed as possible. If you're working with a strap, I'm trying to see if I have any straps around here, I don't. If you're working with a strap, you're gonna loop the strap around your foot and we're going to take this foot towards its own hip socket, yes? And you'll notice the moment you do this, all of your belly is gonna like just splay out. But I want you to think about holding up your lower back by gently holding your belly in, yes? Okay, so heel towards your bun. If you're working with a strap, which could be a belt, it could be a rope, it could be a baby swaddle, <laughs> that's what I have here. Anything that's functioning for your purpose, if you want, you would put it around the ankle or the foot back here, and then you have a little more room to pull that ankle in. So one of the things that we tend to do is twist here. I don't want you to be twisting. That would be my ankle coming to my hip. So we want the heel to come to the back center of your butt. Uh, of the back of your thigh, right? So that the knee is parallel. All right. This is it. This is bus stop A, friends, yeah? Bus stop A. 
as you're working this stretch of your quadriceps and maybe your hip flexors, you're thinking about your two thighs separating over time. Two thighs separating over time. Yeah? Okay, bust up. This is already bust up B. Do you notice how your heel wants to come up? Because that's convenient. Pull it to its own bungee. It would be great if you felt this stretch across the whole front of your thigh. If you feel it on the inside of this knee, close to the floor here, that means you're probably twisting that ankle up. And I can just try and lower it back down. Okay. Everybody who's feeling stretched here and happy, ignore the rest for the next 30 seconds. You could those of you who want more challenge. You could start to wrap this hip as we just discussed. Close to lift your pelvis up. Don't forget your belly here, please. Lift your belly in. Big ab workout. And if you're pressing this heel into your hip, then your goal is that your knee, your hip, and your shoulder and your elbow are all on the same plane. And then I'm using that support feeling to curl my pelvis and let the top of my knee draw into the mat. And release that. All the way down. Everybody let go of that leg and come down into your pigeon pose. Big deep breath. Let your head go. <sighs> On your next inhale, go ahead and switch sides. Yeah, so we're going to have the leg that was behind us in the front, and have the other leg behind us for a pigeon. Le pigeon. Big deep breath. Everybody's left hip down, left knee forward. So you're rolling out a little bit. And you're gonna find your way into this stretch. Yeah? If you don't have a strap and you can't quite reach, that's all right. You can grab your pants or you can just stick that toe to the ground back there. Yeah? You can stick the top of your foot on the ground back there and you can start to reach your knee out. Open up the hip flexor, scooched in a little bit, grabbing that foot, trying to bring your heel down to the center of its own gluteus maximus. You can rest your elbow on the ground if you like. Ooh, that's a challenge. How are your bellies doing? Can we draw our bellies back in? hard not to let that foot float up, isn't it guys? Big breath in. If you're happy working here, stay here. If you'd like to come up off that hip, draw that foot to your body. Find your breath. More breath cycle and release. Come on out of it and come back to your plank, lowering down. Take your hands to your lower back. Remember that feeling we have in the lower back when we do cat cow? Feel that feeling, tucking and rocking underneath, lifting your belly away from the mat. Don't worry so much about the arching, but see if you can pull your belly button in and lift your lower back. You can squeeze your butt, tuck 
help you do this, that's all right. Eventually, you want to be able to do it just with your core strength, but using your butt for now is fine. Can you anchor your shoulder blades and lift the back of your neck, looking straight down at the mat. So don't lift your chin. Forward. If you're looking forward, you're going to be collapsing that neck. So looking down at the mat. And then rest your forehead. And place your hands down on either side of you and bring your heels towards your butt. Yeah? If you have a strap, you could wrap a strap all the way around your feet. If you can't reach at all, that's all right. Just squeeze those heels in. <sighs> Exhale, lift your belly button up away from the floor. Ha, 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 I realize that's quite a challenge. Yeah? Try and hold on to that feeling where you're lifting your belly, lifting your waist, resting on your thighs, squeezing your heels in, yeah? That's best up A. Big breath in. Shoulder blades back. It's going to make your, your, your booty stick out when you pull your shoulders the back. So I want you to reconfirm your belly lift, yes? Bust stop A. That's it. Let it be tiny. Let it be focused on lifting the core. Everybody at bust stop A. Rest. Did you hold your breath? Can we try it again with a soft breath? <sighs> Tuck your belly in. Ankles coming to your hips. Lifting your shoulders back and up. I'm going to free myself. Oh, look, it's a strap. Ha <laughs> ha, that's handy. Okay, so if you have a strap of any sort, including your SI belt, you can wrap it around your feet and hold your feet in. Fun, fun, fun. <sighs> Belly's in. Rise again. All right, bust up B, folks. Can you find your feet? Notice as you pull those feet into your butt, if they want to go out again, don't let them. Hold them in center, please. It becomes more and more challenging to gather your belly and lengthen through the lower back, but easier to pull your shoulder blades back. Bust up C. Press your feet into your hands for the strap. D, rise up. Back with those abdominal walls, friends. And exhale, let it go. Really release, really relax. One more attempt and then we'll rest. Gather your abdominal wall, legs square, shoulders back. If you cannot reach and you don't have a strap, we're just holding this position because that's challenging enough. Don't sacrifice your lower back, friends. go. Everybody press up and come to your child's pose so that that lower back that just got compressed now gets a counter pose. The lower back pushes. I'm pushing with my hands, pushing my supporting the mat, and I'm dropping the tailbone towards my hips because I want to make sure that that lower back where I just curved the opposite direction, now it's getting rounded instead of arched. into that child's pose a little more deeply. Let it go, let it let go. Let gravity take over.
When you're ready, come down in Shavasana. First, lay down. You might feel your hip flexor here. We did a lot of hip flexor opening, but sometimes when we do a lot, that needs to make some grab. Yeah? So if you're feeling tight here or your back feels tight, keep your legs bent, please. Move them out wider than your hips and let your thighs fall together. Let your neck feel long against the mat. And your shoulders open up like a cupboard. Arms go down by your sides. Thumbs rotate out. Eyes closed. Just allowing your breath. Can break down 